We're now joined on the sports mix by the head coach of the Musselman Appleman, Brian Thomas. Coach Thomas, your team unfortunately falls 33-14 to to Jefferson last week. What were your takeaways from the game? Uh, you know, we, we didn't make enough plays to, to get it done. Um, you know, we, we it, it's, it's, it's frustrating when, you know, you're doing some things correctly, but, uh, you know, you're just not making – not making the plays that need to be done to win the game. So, uh, you know, I, I, I was proud of the kids. Uh, I'm proud of their continued effort. Um, you know, their, their, their continued fight that they show that, you know, they're, they're playing hard, but, you know, at the same time, we got to, you know, fundamentally wise, we, we got to play a little bit better. Coach, what do you think you guys need to change in order to find that success on a consistent level? I don't know. I mean, we're we're eight games in. I mean, we we got we got two games left. You know, at, at times, you know, consistency is a problem. Um, you know, we we've we've done we do some good things at times. Uh, you know, we'll play well, but you know, it, it's it's not enough to not enough to win, uh, which is frustrating. You know, we've we've lost five games right now, and the five teams that we've lost to are all teams that are. You know, highly ranked and really good, but you know that's not that's not an excuse. Uh, you know, we're we're in the past we're a program that's used to beating those teams and winning those games, and you know, figuring out a way to you know way to win those things, and we haven't been able to figure out a way to win those games this year, which is really frustrating. With all that frustration that continues to kind of just pile up, unfortunately, for your team this year, how do you? stay on track to finish the season strong and keep a postseason appearance hopefully in the uh front window and not the rear view window yeah i mean i'm i'm an optimistic person you know i'm probably one of the most optimistic person people that you ever meet um you know i i, I always try to find the good in, in everything that there is i think there always is good in everything you know maybe that's just you know, maybe that's just my Christian faith speaking through me, or, or you know, just uh, just the the confidence that I have in in um, our kids, our school, you know, our ability to do things. I don't know what it is, but you know, it's, uh, I am an optimistic person. Um, you know, and, and and it is frustrating, you know, being at three wins and five losses. That's not where you want to be. But uh, at the same time, you know, we got two games left in front of us that you know we we do control our own destiny. So. You know, it's not like it's not like we're staring an zero and ten season in the face. You know, we we have a chance to to win our last two to get in the playoffs and and you know make a run at something and you know have a chance to win it all. Still, you know that's still that's still a possibility. So, you know, we 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 do have to continue. I you know I do think you can continue to get better. I do think that you know you want to be playing your best football. In November, um, you know, the good thing for us is it's not quite November yet, so we can still improve and get better um, and you know, hopefully reach a new peak. Coach, you mentioned that those five losses all coming to uh, some of the top teams in the state, and that is definitely a benefactor for you guys this year is that new, uh, the new rule that, um, I guess, awards points to you playing a tougher schedule and, and something that you guys have done the last few years. Um, I guess what's your thoughts on that rule change and how that could help your team get in, even if your record's not what you wanted it to be at the beginning of the year? Yeah, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the coaches committee in the state of West Virginia. Um, so, you know, we, we, we meet every winter um, and go through rules changes and go through those things. So, you know, I, I was directly in those talks about changing that rule. I mean, I'm, I was all for it then and I continue to be all for it now. You know, I don't think it does anybody – any good to go out and, and, you know, hey, we're going to be the five worst teams in the state and all play each other and somebody has to rise to the top. Well, you know, it, the chances are some of those teams are still bad. They're just beating up on bad teams. So, you know, I, I, I'm all for, um, you know, good teams playing good teams and then being rewarded for the fact that, oh, hey, we can either – well, we can either, you know, play Cabell Midland or play um, such and such – team that you know is going to be one and nine so I'm, I'm all for the fact that 
you know, I, I think teams need to get out and challenge themselves and, and, you know, play other teams. And, you know, there's a lot of teams across the state that won't do that. They won't pick up your phone call. Uh, they won't entertain the fact that, you know, they, they don't want to play, uh, uh, which is just insane to me. But, um, you know, I, I think it's a good rule, you know, to look at a little bit of, hey, not just the fact that you're losing, but, hey, there's a difference. You know, in the past there was – there was no difference if you lost uh, South Charleston or Cabell Midland. Well, to me, there is. If you're going to get out and, and play a Cabell Midland, then you know let, let's look at the fact that you're playing somebody that's the number one team in the state, not a team that hasn't won a game all season. Coach Thomas, any final thoughts on last week's game against Jefferson before we move on to this week's against Washington? No, you know Jefferson is a really good team. Um, you know I don't want to I don't want to sit here and say poor us and make it sound like we're all doing bad things because you know when you play a good team like Jefferson, sometimes they put you in a position where they make you do bad things. So uh, I got a lot of respect for Coach Hunter, uh, a lot of respect for you know the job he does there at Jefferson. Um, you know I'm, I'm definitely rooting for them. You know I root for all of our EPAC teams as long as they're not playing us. So you know I'll definitely be, be pulling for them as they make a postseason run. All right, Coach, let's now look at this week's matchup against Washington. What have you seen from the Patriots so far? Uh, they're improved. You know, they are they're they do a lot of things different compared to what they did last year. You know, obviously they ran the single wing stuff last year, so, you know, it, it, that that's a big improvement when you um, are, are doing away with that stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think – they do some different things from kind of the Washington that we've known in the past. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll put pressure on you. You know, they'll, they'll be aggressive. Uh, they're coming off a really big win against Hampshire, so I'm sure they're really confident uh, about what they're doing. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's another EPAC game, and those EPAC games, you always get everybody's best, best shot. Coach, you mentioned some of their, their changes offensively. Uh, what kind of stood out to you about how they run the spread and – their young quarterback Ryan went and some of the good things that they've been able to do with him this year. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they, 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 just like a lot of other spread teams, they're trying to get the ball in space. They're trying to get the ball to playmakers. You know, when you spread, spread people out, and sometimes it all it takes is one missed tackle and they can take it to the house. So, um, yeah, they're definitely, definitely doing some good things, um, you know, schematically with what they're doing. On your side, what do you want to hopefully see executed to get the win against Washington? Um, not turn the ball over. Um, hopefully we can create turnovers, uh, not give up explosive plays. Um, you know, if they're going to score, make them earn what they score. Um, at the same point, you know, I'd like for us to break a couple explosive plays. So, you know, I, I think if you can execute some of those – simple football statistics that you know usually things go in your way coach uh there's been a lot of big news around here obviously with tyson bajan's success at the nfl level i know you didn't coach him but um you guys have produced nfl town as well and trayvon wesco how do you use those guys as maybe examples to uh your players of if you put the work in you can achieve anything kind of uh I guess, example of those players making it to the level and putting the Eastern Pan in on the map? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think, a uh, good question. I think it gives kids hope a little bit. You know, Trayvon's been big for us just because it's like, hey, we, we've, you know, we've seen this. We've seen it happen before. You know, we, we can talk to our kids directly about we've seen a kid that, you know, has came from the same area you came, played in the same places you played, and, you know, and now he's in the NFL. And, you know, the same thing with, uh, the same thing with Tyson. You know, Tyson, you know, he's able to do that not just for Martinsburg, but really for the whole Eastern Panhandle. So, you know, it does give kids a uh, hope where, you know, maybe 25, 30 years ago, somebody said, oh, you know, that, that stage is too big. You can't make that. Where now kids can say, well, you know, yeah, I can because it, it, it's, it's been done um, a little bit, you know, he, here in our here in our county. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for Tyson, just like I do all these kids. You know, I root for any kid that comes out of the pain handle is able to play um, on, on college football or on the pro level. So, you know, it's exciting what's he's, what he's doing. All right, Coach, before we let you go, we'll ask you our fun question for the week. Growing up, who was uh, one of your role models and why? Oh, my goodness. Jeez, that's a – man, that's a tough one. Man, that's a tough 
tough one. Um, you know, uh, the first the first thing that pops in my head is my dad. You know, my dad was a good uh, Christian man. You know, I, I think you got to have good as a young man. You got to have good men in your life. You know, that's one of the reasons I got into coaching is because I want to be a good role model and influence um, on on these boys as they grow up and be, become men. So, you know, my dad was, I got to see it directly, uh, you know, how a Christian man, a Christian father, um, Christian husband should live his life. So um, I'd probably say my dad, you know, from a coaching standpoint, um, you know, take it a little bit different of approach. You know, one of my, me being a Hedgesville graduate, one of my, one of the guys that really made me appreciate coaches and what they do um, was Kelly Church. You know, he's my high school, he's my high school coach, um, my high school basketball coach, and he, you know, I could see the work that he'd put in um, and, and the effort that he would put in. And me and Coach Church still have a relationship uh, to this day. You know, he he'll call me, uh, text me, um, you know, and he he was a good he was a good influence, a good role model, just because you know I I, I could see the hard work um, that she had to put in through coaching and teaching. All right, Coach Thomas, appreciate the time as always, and good luck this week. Hey, thank you guys. Appreciate all you do.